Hi everyone and welcome back to my first person shooter tutorials. In this episode we're going to go over the process of how to turn the gun you get with the uh, first person template, the single shot semi-automatic, into a fully automatic weapon. Okay, so that's what we're going to look at today. And for this you need to make sure you have completed the first part of the tutorial which is episode 1 uh, setting up if you haven't done so please go check that out now because um, this follows on straight away from that okay so in this part we're going to go through the process of turning this into a machine gun okay so previously we created a gun parent which looked something like this and had a function on it called fire bullet which fired a single bullet out of its gun and we made that a child actor on our player character reason being is because then later on we can swap out the guns uh, as we want generate random loot so generate randomized guns with randomized stats that do different things and assign it to the character make them pick them up and use them uh, something similar to you would see in like games like Fortnite, Borderlands, Destiny, all those sort of games where you can find guns on the floor, pick them up, and they're all sort of randomised and have some random uh, stats and details about them. Okay, so what to do is quite simple. All we have to do is create a child of our gun parent. So we've done that already last time with the semi-automatic. This time we're going to right-click on the gun parent and create another child class. Gun underscore fully automatic and open it up so this is a child meaning that it's inherited everything that was on that parent uh, actor uh, so all the same functions exist all the same variables exist and you see all the variables over here on the right hand side and we can tweak and change this however we like because um, it's a child okay and because it's a child, it doesn't affect any other child's, uh, child's of the gun parent. So, the way this works is we are going to call some functions. And that is going to be the start shooting function. Event start shooting. And we also want to do the stop shooting function. Uh, event. And these are the two that are called by the first person character. Uh, so this is because this is a child this will call everything that's on the parent class um, if we choose to do so which we want it to do so to do that you have to right click on it and go add call to parent function we've done this last time I'm just going to reiterate and repeat it every time hook that up and again with stop shooting add call to parent function like so. so now that's going to call the start shooting event of the parent, which is gun parent, which you can see on the top right here, it says gun parent. So this one will be a bit different because uh, it's going to be a fully automatic weapon. So what we need to do is make it loop through the fire bullet uh, function until we let go of the trigger. So the way we do that is with the timer by set timer by function name. And this node basically sets a timer, and will after that time has expired, will trigger a function which we define here. So the function we want to type in here has to be fire bullet, and it has to be spelled exactly the same, capital letters and all. And we want object to be left alone. We don't need to change that because we're referencing ourselves. Uh, the time though will be the fire rate. So right click and type get fire rate. And that was a variable we set up on the parent. That's why I don't see it down here. Okay, so hook that up to the time slot there. And if we want to change the fire rate, we can change it down here in a default value here. Or we can do a set fire rate node. If we want it to be a bit more variable and dynamic, we can do so there too. Now, the last thing we need to do is tick the looping box because we want it to fire bullets in a loop. So keep firing bullets every so often. So every 0.15 seconds which we define here with fire rate we're going to fire a bullet and uh, it will keep doing that on a loop to stop this loop we need to save this function to a variable and then call that function and tell it to stop so this return value basically we can use this to promote this to a variable 
and name it. So I'm going to call it the gun timer. And that means that I've stored this looping node as a variable. And I can now call that variable on the stop shooting to tell it to stop. So drag the gun timer out, choose get, and then from gun timer, you can then type in clear and invalidate timer by handle. Choose that one and hook it up to the stop shooting. So to test this out, we need to go back to our first person character. And we need to go click on the child actor gun. And the child actor class, we're going to change that to the gun fully automatic. And click compile. That's all we have to do. Now if I go back to the game and play it, I can click and hold and it will fire bullets. So one thing we need to do on here to make it uh, that slightly bit better is you, it's hard to say, uh, hard to see for yourselves right here, right now. But if you're following along, you'll notice that if you click the mouse button, there's a slight delay before the first bullet comes out, which isn't realistic. So what we need to do is set it to actually fire the bullet, then set the timer. So we're going to go back to our gun. And between the start shooting and the set timer, we're going to call that fire bullet function. And now it's going to be fully responsive and shoot that first bullet and the rest of them will come from the timer. Now as for running out of bullets and reloading uh, functions, we're going to do that in a later video. Uh, in that case, we go back to the parent and we set that all up all on the parent. And that means it will re-inherit all that code we do. But that's for another video and another time. So that's it. This is simply just how you do a machine gun. And uh, as I said, all that we're doing now is setting up loads of things so we can set up a, 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 a option in our game to have randomized loot that we can equip to the player through uh, menus and create it, that sort of destiny Fortnite kind of uh, feel of a game. If you've liked this video, please support me on Patreon. Every little helps and it is uh, nice to know uh, these videos are appreciated in that uh, manner. If you can support me, that'd be great. And as a reward, you get to see videos two weeks ahead of time and uh, later rewards and uh, levels can get you access to my personal help on your projects and so forth. I just want to thank those who already have supported me and I'll just read out their names. So we've got Artifact. Uh, Guard Realms, David Brown, Chris Yules, Matthew Wilmot, Pil uh, Paul Winpenny, uh, Niels Luke, uh, Steve Hingle, Sam Davis, Elliot LaRue and Joseph Longoria. Thank you so much for the support so far um, in my little venture here making these videos and I look forward to making more videos for you all in the future. And that's it. I'll see you next time. We'll create more guns and more stuff for our shooter. Thank you and goodbye. Hi right, everyone, if you do like these videos and you have liked what I've done in the past and want to see what else I can do, um, all your support is greatly appreciated on YouTube. However, I do have a Patreon set up as well where you can support me even further. Money donated by yourselves will help me make better videos and better content um, and more frequently, hopefully. Plus, it will help me develop my own projects. Currently, I'm in a project at the moment and I'll hopefully be able to share that with you uh, sh soon. Um, if you do so, just, uh, choose to donate and subscribe to us on Patreon, uh, you do get access to videos two weeks ahead of time, plus there are many other rewards available to you too. So head on over to www.patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley, and uh, thank you for your support, and I'll see you next time. Bye.